Just before I came to the school, which was almost eight years ago, SATS results were in their 50s. There wasn't a systematic way of teaching reading, for example. Whereas what we have now are SATS results which are in their late 80s, early 90s. Children rapidly learn how to read. And the philosophy that we have in our school here is that we don't want any child falling through the net. <laughs> Who's ready to sing beautifully? This time we're going to be doing our spelling. My turn, your turn. What we do initially is we assess the children. So we put them into different ability groups. We find that this has a very big impact because every child is then reading at the right level. Fantastic, White Stan's got two sounds. This is the lowest teacher-led set. Children that are about a 2C, 1A. Um, most of them are EAL learners. Um, most of them have been at our school since the nursery. Well done, write it down. Four sounds, what one are we using? Are we using put the zoo or chew the stew? Write them down. One, two, three, show me. Did we use poo at the zoo or chew the stew? I think you have to make the lessons quite dynamic, especially for this group, because a lot of them are low ability children. You have to get them interested, you have to get them excited. We do the phonics every day. Steady this one. They have to do the speed sounds, and you have to make it interesting for the children. The children love doing it. I can see you chewing the stew. This one. They lack confidence. And so with the paired work, then it's more of an emphasis on both of them. Screech it? Tell your partner why the ending's a little bit funny. If you work in a group, sometimes children sit back and don't want to take part. If you're in a pair, they've got partner one and partner two, so they take it in turns. And it just gives them a kind of safe way of answering the question. And as a teacher, I can go round listening to them, ensuring that they understand. In a week, I would make sure that I have heard every child read, and so has my TA so that at the end of the week we can discuss if there's any problems that we feel a child is not making the right progress or has made really good progress. Because we've identified the needs of individuals and we've made sure that they're reading at the right level, we haven't needed reading recovery. For example, we have much fewer children on the SEN register than perhaps other schools, and that's because many of our SEN children have actually learned to read through the programme that we've been using. All the sounds that are in that book have been taught before. I'm not setting up my children to fail because they know the sounds that are in it. Very good the next book will have a new sound in that we will have learned and it then progresses on. So the children are constantly learning but constantly supported. They're not reading something that they're not going to be able to do. I want you to get on your broomsticks. And I want you to whiz back to your carpet spaces. Oh, look at you witches! We try and do a lot of oral sentence building to get them to have the language. And it also is about understanding that what they're reading isn't just words, that there's actually telling a story. The foolish witch was wearing clumpy boots, so she was wearing boots like this. Big, clumpy boots. Put on your big, clumpy boots. Are you going to tiptoe around or are you going to stomp in your big, clumpy boots? Oh, clumpy boots! Comprehension is really important, so you want them to think about what's happened in the story or the characters in the stories. Hello, is this Miss Russell's class? Yes! They love when you dress up or they love when you do something else and they really do start to think of you as that character. I'm Gretel. Hello everyone. Hello. Are you going to say hello Gretel? Hello Gretel. I've just escaped. I've just run all the way here and I came because I heard that you're reading a story about me. Initially we had a few sceptical staff, staff that thought, you know, teaching phonics would be boring. But strangely enough, some of those are now some of our best 
best teachers for literacy and for phonics because they see the results, they see how quickly children learn how to read. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. A scheme like this, what's shown me is that it teaches children to read. I've got set seven in a year two class in a school where the majority are EAL learners and every child in this class could read that book. And more importantly, they weren't just decoding the book, they understood what they were reading and they enjoyed it. Oh, Riddle, look, there's a house made of sweets. Let's come and eat it. Our goal is ultimately to make children into um, not only fluent readers, but children who enjoy reading and to kind of instill that into kind of a lifetime habit. We believe that it's got to be through phonics first and foremost. And that doesn't mean that we exclude all other uh, ways of teaching, but we believe that's the most effective way of making sure that children uh, initially um, learn how to read properly. Well done, give them a clap. That was so good.